And welcome back to TYT Sports. UFC uh, 214 concluded Saturday evening in which John Jones uh, regained his light heavyweight championship belt. Uh, there's a lot of takeaways and I found interesting talking points that came uh, immediately after and then Sunday, but none more concerning to me than Joe Rogan and eventually the right move to apologize for, for what mm -hmm. he did. So Joe Rogan in context here, uh, first things, he interviewed Daniel Cormier after he got knocked out in the octagon. Joe Rogan always interviews both fighters, yeah. usually unless somebody's been knocked out. Because within five minutes of that happening, as it turned out Daniel Cormier had a concussion uh, and was most likely just trying to get help, looked like he had almost no idea where he was. Um, it, was t it was brutal to watch and it was unfair. Joe Rogan had this to say, Following all of that, they, uh, this was Dana White at least. Let me go to Joe Rogan's uh, tweets and his Instagram first, if we can get to that. There we go. He goes, my apologies to DCMMA and to all of you upset by my interviewing after the fight. In all honesty, I was kind of in shock. And he later said, uh, or at least alongside this, uh, I don't think I even realized what I was doing until I had a mic in my hand and I was talking to him. I've said that I don't want to interview fighters after they've been KO'd and that I did it to someone that I care a great deal about. It was 100% my fuck up and no one pressured me to do it. He posted a series of tweets uh, and went on to say that he wanted to put it on all the social platforms so people saw it. Uh, Francis, we've been in agreement for a long time. You don't interview fighters after they've been knocked out. But why do you think he, he did in this case? Because it's against his own mantra. I guess. I guess the magnitude of the fight, John Jones making his return to the octagon for what has seemed like a decade. Uh, maybe he just wanted to, because this fight, it's been so eagerly anticipated. It's been up and down for the past three years or whatever, two and a half yeah. years, whatever it's been. So maybe he just wanted to try and get the content out of it that we've all kind of been waiting for. But I thought the fight itself was enough um, to just allow it to go down as a success from what we wanted to see. If you're, I'm not saying if you're a fan of Daniel Cormier, you don't want to understand where his mind's at. But wait for that because we know how much this meant to Daniel Cormier. Of we course. saw his response when he was told that John Jones wasn't going to make the fight. He basically was so angry yeah. uh, in the previous uh, the previous fight. Uh, he was devastated because he knew that this is what this is what his whole career kind of like is. This is what's gonna cement himself. I think he's already cemented as a tremendous fighter, but I mean, this would just catapult him to the top of the rankings uh, as far as UFC. So he's obviously devastated. Like he just lost uh, a fight that he's been mentally, physically preparing for for what, two and a half, three years. So to have all that just torn down because you lost in the fight, his emotions are all over the place. Physically, he's not there. Mentally, he's not there. Uh, you just need to give him some time. As for why Joe Rogan did it, I just think he himself was swept away by the whole anticipation of the fight so that when he got into the octagon, he maybe just wanted to get that instinctive response. Uh, and as we know, it's not right. And I know people want the content and they want to figure it out, but just give the guy a little bit of time. Go and interview John Jones, talk to him for the full extent of your coverage. Yeah. Because he will have plenty to say. He, I'm sure, is, is on top of the world after uh, the situation that he's been in for the past Here's few years. What's so remarkable about John Jones, John Jones is 30 years old. John Jones is in the athletic prime of his career mm -hmm. and we have yet to ever see the actual best of John Jones. That was the fifth time that they tried to make this fight happen. Only twice did it actually happen. Obviously, remember UFC 200, you remember Daniel Cormier's injury, you remember John Jones' continuous ability to not have his life together. Self sabotage, John. And self sabotage. His biggest enemy, the only person who could actually defeat John Jones is John Jones. Mm -hmm. I believe that. So, following. The spectacle, and it was a spectacle because John Jones, when you read the interviews from last Wednesday, he was talking with Frank Mir, and Frank Mir, he asked Frank Mir, an ex-UFC fighter, I'm not sure if he's fighting anymore, I don't think so though, yeah. um, or it's been a while since he stepped into the octagon, correct me if I'm wrong though. Uh, he was asking about a specific type of choke, and he was asking him about it, not to use it against Daniel Cormier to submit him. When Frank Mir asked him, why would you want me to teach you something that you wouldn't use to submit Daniel Cormier? He goes, I'm not gonna do it to submit him, I'm gonna use this to try to trick him or make him think something that's not if the fight were to go to the ground. The fight never actually went to the ground, but Frank Mir continued to tell him that John Jones was explaining to him that he wasn't in this fight to beat Daniel Cormier, he was in it to break him. Uh -huh. And there's a part of me that believes 
that while Daniel Cormier, I thought decisively won round two, and it was a toss up for round one, so I had a tied going into round three, although all three judges had a 2018 Jones by yeah. round three, which I thought was a little concerning because Cormier would have probably been robbed yeah, if he continued so. to fight the way he did and then lost the belt because of a first or that, 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 that judge's unanimous decisions for the first two rounds. There's a part of me that believes that John Jones knew Cormier was going to make that mistake or something similar and he was going to finish him brutally. No matter how much Cormier trained, no matter how well he adjusted to fighting John Jones, how well he looked inside the pocket, keeping the pace of the octagon under his control. It was always Cormier tracking down Jones, but it might have been a mental head Progress game, game Jones was playing. Yeah. And it just goes to show that for one, peak fitness John Jones is the scariest fighter in the entire UFC. Um, him fighting Brock Lesnar would be very fun. It really would be. And then the fight I'd like to see is Gustafson. I yes. think that would be two guys. I think Gustafson is your is kind of like your minor league John Jones. Yeah. I mean, which is almost offensive to say to Alexander Gustafson, but the fact that Cormier was able to beat him kind of showed like maybe he could beat John Jones. These are two more aesthetically pl uh, pleasing fighters. And at least now, by the way, Daniel Cormier has gotten a flooding of respect. Yeah. Which, by the way, should have happened year after year because he was a model champion. And he is a model father, as John Jones put it. No sympathy to John Jones, by the way. You gotta prove to the world that you can step no, no. into the octagon yeah. again in six months. Not 900, not one fight in 965 days. None of this Ovin St. Peru shite where you, you miss 600 days, you fight Peru, and then it's a year and four months later you fight Cormier. Like, we need you in the octagon to showcase what you could do at the top of your game. Yeah, that's, there's no substitute for match practice, as we always used to say in football, meaning mm. like, you can prepare yourself all you want, but as soon as you step out on the field and you do that every single uh, week, I know you can't do that in UFC, but you get what I mean, regularly. Uh, <laughs> Some fighters would be like, yeah, I'll fight tomorrow. Nate Diaz, I'm sure, or Nate, <laughs> if they had right. the money. Uh, <laughs> then that's when you start to really come into your own. Uh, that's when you start to hit the prime of your, uh, both your skill level and your physical preparation, everything that goes into it. John Jones has not been at that stage for what, nearly three and four or four years. So we all want to see him consistently compete. We want him to sit, take yes. on a, a, a Conor McGregor schedule where he yeah. will look to the next card and who he wants to fight. Because you're absolutely right. It's not just what he's proven. Yeah, he, he, we all know he's a phenomenal fighter, but he has to gain the respect of loyal fans who are not just paying for a once every three years John Spectacle. Jones. G gain our respect as fans so that you can consistently defend your title and prove to us that you're the unanimous pound-for-pound uh, pound fighter in the world and undoubtedly one of the best. So in order to do that, you gotta take what's coming to you. I know he wants to choose who he's got to fight, but if I was Dana White, I would be holding those past grievances over his head and saying, no, 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 you're not gonna pick and choose. We're gonna give you people to fight. You may be the champion. You have lo you lost our respect well, beforehand. Let's see who you can who you can handle. We throw in a you. perfect world, we know Dana White thinks in a couple of different ways. He has different thoughts for different um, fighters. Mm -hmm. Does he favor certain fighters? Of course he does. Look at Demetrius Johnson versus John Jones. John Jones will be highlighting any main card forever. Demetrius Johnson to even be the be even a co co headliner on a John Jones or a Lesnar or the eventual GSP Bisping fight at Madison Square Garden, by yeah. the way, November 4th, I think it's UFC 217. That's possibly where you wanna throw the Jones-Lesnar card. But do Lesnar, if you're gonna have him fight Brock Lesnar, which, by the way. <laughs> You've never seen a man that big. Lesnar is 40 pounds oh. heavier than I think he said, so I'm not sure where they would, maybe it's 215, but I'd be, I'm, I, you're a UFC fighter, no one's afraid of anybody. I'm Brock Lesnar, like uh, John Jones at 215, 220, you're approaching like, like NFL linebacker status of speed, athleticism, anticipation. And I'm like, I don't know if I wanna fight that, man. Like Brock Lesnar is an undoubtedly uh, fantastic wrestler and could have been. As Joe Rogan has even said it himself, if he only focused on MMA, only, never did the WWE stuff, we think that he could have been. He has all the tools to be one of the most devastating submission artists in like the history of the UFC. But I mean, you look at what John Jones was able to accomplish against Daniel Cormier, who's only lost to John Jones yeah. in his career. 
And you gotta think, I think Gustafsson's the more aesthetically pleasing fight. I think Lesnar is the biggest money fight in the history of the UFC, especially if you're pairing it with GSP versus Bisping. Bigger than any Conor McGregor? Player? I think that it will do more based on Lesnar's ability to draw and the return of Both George St. Yeah. Pierre and Bisping and where the UFC is now after it had a successful card. Yeah. Now, if you wanna do the greatest money fights in the history of the UFC, I think if you, the day you get McGregor back into the octagon, McGregor that will John shut. Jones. Doesn't, but, you, but you, you laugh at that, but that's not, you make a joke of that, but that's not nearly as ridiculous as Mayweather McGregor is. Yeah, you're very true. Like so, and why it's not completely it, out of the spectrum of what Conor McGregor would want to do. Why that? wouldn't McGregor want to go in and fight John Jones? I don't know what the f happens in that fight, but I do know it's more realistic than Mayweather McGregor, and the the less realistic one is happening in twenty five days, yeah. twenty six days. Uh, yeah, I, I I don't <laughs> McGregor Lesnar. My, like, why can't that happen? My memory of Brock Lesnar's past fights, I know that he's lost Besides a that few he times. Cheats. <laughs> but I know he's lost a few times in in the UFC, but I can't remember has he been knocked out like. Brutally knocked out. I just think there's something so Phew. aesthetically mind blowing about a man that size Falling. hitting the canvas. I'm positive we'll all be shook out of our seats. Like if he's, and I'm not saying <laughs> he would lose that way, but I think we would all bounce from our seats if that guy was to fall uh, uh, to the hands of like a John Jones Brock leg Lesnar kick or whatever. Such, kick. Like his head kick. I was telling head Rick, kick. I was like, he's he's shaped like. Like a like a stack of a, a million guitar picks, <laughs> just like it's like a V. He's a and literal. His traps vi are the size of my. He's body. a literal Viking. Yeah, he is. I don't know why he's not in Game of Thrones. I'm surprised. Well, because I mean, the mountain who is in Game of Thrones. But imagine like, those two fighting. That'd be like Optimus versus. Dude, he's like. He's, uh, Megatron in real life. It's funny because like they give him like in the Game of Thrones they give there's a character in Game of Thrones uh, nicknamed the Mountain. His he's got a huge Instagram following. Because uh, he's, he's like one of the world's strongest men. If not, he might be the world's strongest. Man. I think he was for a like, little bit. For I'm a little sure bit, he won it uh, um, back to back. He's but. one of the guys that like deadlifts so much that you look at it and you go, "My arms would fall out of their sockets." <laughs> you, if I, were to I would pull myself up and I'm like, "This weight's light." <laughs> no arms. No arms. Stuck to the bar. So uh, in the show Game of Thrones, they have. Like he doesn't say anything right now, he just kind of stands there. And even with armor on, like some of the other people in Game of Thrones are big people and they look, <laughs> they look like me, the coffee cup compared to me. And you're like, I wouldn't even feel comfortable acting in a scene with a guy who can take my head and squish it into it, whatever shape he wanted. I'm sure that was one of the scenes. I, I don't watch the show as much, it so was I'm sure he scenes, did that. But I don't want to spoil anything for anybody. Five um, years ago or something like that. It was a couple years ago. So uh, uh, Lesnar versus uh, the Mountain, and then McGregor versus Jones, and we're talking, and GSP versus Bisping, which it's, got, it's a bit of old men fighting. It's the only thing that it's good to see George St. Pierre back. Yeah. But what are we going to see out of a guy who hasn't fought in five years? Interesting, I tell you that. Big fan base, though. Wait for that that one to show up, and also having it at the Madison Square Garden, where we saw last year. Yeah, you want big fights there, because they, they, they draw a crowd. <laughs> it's good to get a happy crowd at Madison Square Garden for a while. A little bit, a little, they, they rage, I'm telling you. McGregor's fans, they win at the Garden, it's scary. It's scarier than, when, if, they, than if you lost. It's scarier if the Knicks haven't won at the Garden. <laughs> That's never gonna happen. <laughs>